In this lecture, we'll be examining the Battle of Ap Bak, a 1963 clash between the ARVN, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, or South Vietnam, and the PLAF, the People's Liberation Armed Forces, an insurgent group um, somewhat controlled by Hanoi and associated with the National Liberation Front. This uh, relatively inconsequential battle in terms of um, territory lost and gained um, had profound um, implications for the rest of the war, at least to people who were paying attention at the time. On December 28, 1962, American and ARVN intelligence indicated that a sizable force of Viet Cong were located at a small hamlet in the Mekong Delta called Ap Bak, which you can see on the map here. The village was located about 45 miles southwest of Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam. At first it seemed that the Viet Cong were preparing for a conventional field battle which would have heavily favored the ARVN. Pictured on this slide on the left is U.S. Army Lieutenant Colonel John Paul Van who was advising the ARVN on the battle plan. In the battle approximately 3,000 ARVN troops would face off against a little more than 300 fighters of the PLAF's 514th Battalion. The ARVN possessed many technological advantages over their rebel counterparts. Uh, helicopter gunships, armored personnel carriers, and bombers could provide immense firepower in the battle against Viet Cong forces. The uh, Viet Cong were limited to mostly small arms, plus a few mortars, grenades, and a couple of machine guns. The ARVN also possessed sophisticated artillery and other heavy weapons. Pictured here is an M113 armored personnel carrier, an APC, sometimes referred to by the nickname the Green Dragon. The M113 was a new vehicle at the time with a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on top you can see here. The crew of two could ferry up to 11 soldiers at a time comfortably and the light vehicle was designed to be airlifted and or airdropped by C-130 and C-141 transport planes. To destroy the insurgent forces, the plan was to attack from three directions um, using two provincial Civil Guard battalions plus elements of the ARVN 7th Infantry Division. The infantry units would be supported by artillery, uh, M113 armored personnel carriers, and helicopters. The planners believed they could encircle the Viet Cong, as you can see on the map here, prevent their escape, and then eventually, um, through attrition, destroy the rebel forces. Uh, the operation began on uh, January the 2nd, 1963, at 4 a.m. One of the problems that interfered with ARVN success in general on the battlefield was President Jim's micromanaging of operations. Jim reprimanded and sometimes even demoted officers who racked up high battle casualties regardless of how successful any given military campaign had been. So there was a disincentive to lose troops for ARVN officers. In the Battle of Ap Bak, many ARVN officers were reluctant to engage the enemy, or at least through their actions we can determine that they were. There are also, I should point out, and the Moss text also points this out, um, there were some significant cultural issues in the ARVN that reduced its fighting capabilities. Most officers were from middle and upper class Catholic families from the Saigon area. Many of them spoke French better than they did uh, various Vietnamese dialects. Many of them had uh, high levels of education. The ARVN troops, though, the, the grunt level troops, were often rural peasants, frequently Buddhists, and they were kind of viewed as sort of backward country bumpkins by their officers. Now, this social and cultural and religious, in many cases, divide did not lend itself well uh, to combat leadership by officers or uh, the ability to follow orders by the infantry. The 15 American helicopters carrying ARVN troops were hit by Viet Cong small arms fire Five helicopters were downed, and 14 of the 15 um, sustained significant damage in the battle. 
uh, the Huey Cruz. Huey is another nickname for the helicopter that you see. And the troops on the ground refused to move due to the heavy Viet Cong fire that they encountered. As the battle bogged down, uh, American Lieutenant Colonel Van believed a detachment of armored personnel carriers could turn the situation around. However, the APCs were first slowed by some terrain difficulties. In particular, one of the canals was a bit uh, deeper and wider, and they had to throw some logs and uh, brush in there to be able to get the APCs across. And then ARVN commanders further delayed the arrival of the APCs um, with some indecision, some confusion about orders. I'm being diplomatic here, and maybe some uh, deliberate um, sabotaging of the plan, again, to reduce casualties because that was what was highly prized in this highly politicized um, military situation. Um, Van's plan with the APCs, uh, however, couldn't go directly to the ARVN field commanders. He was technically an advisor sent over, and ARVN officers were instructed to not follow American orders. There was a certain protocol that had to be followed. And again, each chain of the communication kept slowing things down. During the confusion, uh, Viet Cong rep rebels uh, took the initiative and began attacking the gunners and the commanders of the APCs, who were exposed due to a lack of shielding. You can see on this particular M113, which was uh, an image taken just after this battle, there isn't any significant shielding. The newer ones, they had sort of a 45 degree angle shield that would protect the commander and the, uh, the gunner. Um, later versions of the N M113 would correct this, but at uh, Apbach, the APCs uh, ground to a halt or retreated. Communication problems uh, continued to plague the ARVN throughout the battle. Uh, there were long de delays that prevented paratroopers from helping in the operation. When the paratroopers finally arrived, they were dropped uh, too close to the Viet Cong, who found them relatively easy to shoot at. A number of them were killed uh, parachuting down. Um, compounding this, there were airstrikes scheduled that were hours overdue, and the uh, airstrikes actually landed too close to the ARVN, and uh, some of them were uh, hurt by friendly fire or killed instead of Viet Cong. Um, the VC forces, uh, or PLAF forces, managed to slip away at darkness. In the end, the ARVN sustained uh, nearly 200 casualties with approximately 83 soldiers killed, while the Viet Cong casualties were much lower, just a few dozen fighters and perhaps only 15 soldiers killed. While troop losses at Ap Bac in comparison to the entirety of the Vietnam War are relatively small, the Battle of Ap Bac was noteworthy in many ways. For the Viet Cong, the Battle of Ap Bac was the first time that they stood and fought a large South Vietnamese formation. And even though the uh, Viet Cong or PLAF were outnumbered more than 10 to 1 and faced a tremendous technological disadvantage, uh, the Viet Cong achieved their first major battlefield victory, distinguishing themselves as being fierce fighters. On the other side, the problems that plagued the ARVN, um, including a poor leadership, um, a lack of morale, and the... Uh, the political infighting that we talked about were uh, exposed in this battle. Um, even worse, a number of U.S. commanders and military leaders failed to recognize the warnings that people like uh, Lieutenant Colonel John Paul Van gave them after the disaster. Many American officials simply looked at the results, which were the capture of a few hamlets as planned, as uh, something of a tactical victory, and they tried to spin this that way. And they ignored the glaring problems that should have been very visible after Ap Bac. Also, this was the first time in the Vietnam War uh, that the American press reported a significant defeat in Vietnam. You could probably make the argument, uh, perhaps, that the seeds of American discontent toward the Vietnam War uh, might have been considered to be planted at Ap Bac. This brings to a close our brief look at the Battle of Ap Bac.